This is an auto time presentation. It will not be necessary to use your mouse or keyboard to advance the slides. Diseases of the Human Ear A presentation by Jesse Rimshis, Emma Klein, and Connie Bernard. The human ear is divided in two three anatomical sections. The outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The outer ear consists of the auricle, or pinna, which collects sound waves, and the external auditory canal, which allows them to pass to the middle ear. The middle ear contains the tympanic membrane, or eardrum, and the three bony auditory ossicles, the malus, incus, and stapes. These serve to transmit the vibrations created by sound waves to the inner ear. These vibrations are transmitted by the stapes through the oval window of the labyrinth and into the fluid-filled cochlea, where they are detected by some 30,000 special sensory hair cells. These hair cells produce nerve impulses which are passed along the cochlear nerve and eventually enter the temporal lobes. Also within the inner ear are the vestibule, which provides static equilibrium, and the three semicircular canals, which provide dynamic equilibrium along the three axes. Nerve impulses from the sensory organs within these structures are passed along the vestibular nerve Sensory neural hearing loss. Sensory neural hearing loss is a hearing deficit caused by disorders of sensory hair cells of the cochlea, the auditory or vestibulocochlear nerve, or the central processing areas of the brain. Sensory neural hearing loss can be detected by a simple test called the Weber test. In the Weber test, a tuning fork or a similar device, is placed on the mid-sagittal line of the patient's forehead. If the patient has a sensory neural hearing deficit in one ear, the sound he or she hears will lateralize to the other ear. For instance, if this patient hears the tuning fork more clearly in his right ear, he likely has sensory neural damage affecting his left ear. Although there are many causes of sensory neural hearing loss, one of the most common is inner ear damage due to prolonged exposure to loud sounds. First, powerful sound waves enter the ear, vibrating the eardrum, and causing the ossicles to beat against the oval window of the labyrinth. This creates tiny waves in the paralymph and endolymph fluids. If the sound gets too loud, the waves get too powerful, damaging the sensitive hair cells upon which your hearing depends. Sensory neural hearing loss is irreversible. Other causes of sensory neural hearing loss or deficit include infections including meningitis, congenital defects, severe head trauma, particularly damage to the temporal lobe, toxins, some cancer treatments such as chemotherapy and radiation, and presbycusis, that is, old age hearing loss. Conductive hearing loss. Conductive hearing loss occurs when the conduction of sound waves through the external auditory canal, temporal membrane, or auditory ossicles does not properly occur. A simple test, called the Rene test, is used to detect conductive hearing loss. In the Rene test, a tuning fork is struck and held against the mastoid process of the patient's temporal bone. When the patient reports that he can no longer hear the tuning fork, it is moved to the front of the external auditory meatus. If the patient cannot then hear the tuning fork, bone conduction is better than air conduction and conductive hearing deficit is indicated. Causes of conductive hearing loss include cholesteatoma, in which non-cancerous masses of skin cells develop in the middle ear and mastoid area. Less commonly, cholesteatoma can invade the inner ear or brain. As the skin mass expands it destroys anything in its path and is often accompanied by infection. 
The ossicles can be damaged by even the smallest cholesteatoma. These masses must be removed to prevent the ear from being severely damaged. Otitis media, an inflammation of the middle ear, and the most common cause of hearing impairment in children. In otitis media, the inflammation often begins when infections that cause sore throats, colds, or pulmonary symptoms spread to the middle ear. Otosclerosis of the middle ear, in which, most commonly, the stapes undergoes extraneous bone growth, partially fusing its articulation with the incus or the oval window. And cerumen overgrowth and impaction, in which excessive earwax blocks the conduction of sound waves. Each of these conditions blocks the conduction of sound waves through the ear, whether the outer ear or the middle ear. Fortunately, these conditions can often be partially or completely corrected. Prevalence of hearing loss According to the Better Hearing Institute, it is estimated that 31.5 million Americans suffer from hearing loss. That's about 10% of the U.S. population. 65% of those affected by hearing loss are younger than 65, including 6 million Americans, between the ages of 18 and 44, and 1.5 million school-age children. This is a hair cell of the inner ear. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. Put your flat bags on. Join me home. We'll have some fun when the clock strikes one. We're gonna rock around the clock.